He hit him on the side of the head. Oh no, he's getting Rip hurt him. here. Yep. Pochier is charging goes here. down again. This could do it. And that indeed does it. Ihor Potieria produces his first UFC win. Hello, I'm John Gooden and this is Eurowatch where I share some insight on European talent heading into battle this weekend. Fighting on the prelims in the Spectrum Center, North Carolina is Germany's Mandy Boom. Now I don't like leaning into the negative stuff, but I'm gonna get this out of the way early. Cancellations. When you look at Boom's career, she has sadly faced so many cancellations and rescheduled bouts. I counted 12 on Tapology. Injuries and other scheduling matters are part of the game, but I have sympathy for a fighter with a 10 fight career enduring those ups and downs. I also bring this up as I was in Vegas back in February announcing the weigh-ins of Boom and her opponent Kim at the apex only for Mandy to fall ill and withdraw from the fight. Terrible situation for everyone concerned after their respective investments. It becomes a little more painful when you look at the form guide as well as both ladies are desperate for a win. Boom hasn't yet felt the emotion of having her hand raised in the octagon and it was October 2019 when Ji Young Kim enjoyed her last UFC win. In my research for their fight in February I really got the sense that Boom was in a good place mentally and physically up until the illness to show us what she can really do. She came to the UFC as a 7-0 fighter but hasn't yet translated that form in the octagon. There have been a lot of changes like moving her preparation from Germany to Extreme Couture in Las Vegas plus some other issues that have been alluded to as well. But Boom has been sound very confident and after working with a psychologist she expressed how much more free she felt and therefore excited to step out again. She recognized that the adaption process takes time but it sounds like she's there now with her new team and some learning lessons behind her. This fight is between rangy striking stylists but that becomes a challenge for both as they typically fight with a reach advantage. A former European champion in kickboxing and K1 Boom will probably lean on those fundamentals but I do wonder if the winner is the fighter that mixes their arts. Working in the room with Invictus Maria Favela and Jocelyn Edwards, Boom has some good bodies to play out her strategy. And Edwards is actually the last person to fight Kim beating her over the three rounds. So some good note sharing will be done for sure. Ji Yun Kim will make her 10th walk for the UFC and she returns to flyweight after not getting the result at Bantam. She brings the heat on fight nights as evidenced by two fight of the night bonuses. And back in February, Kim wasn't speaking very positively about her mental and physical condition. So hopefully with the additional time to prepare, both ladies can bring something a little special to the Octagon this Saturday. You can watch this fight here on UFC Fight Pass. He hit him on the side of the head. Oh no, he's getting Rip hurt him. here. Yep. Potieri is charging goes here. down again. This could do it. And that indeed does it. Ihor Potieria produces oh. his first UFC win. Also fighting on the UFC Fight Pass prelims is Ihor Potieria. In his post-fight interview after beating Shogun Hua, he said, I'm the new future of the UFC. So this weekend, we'll get to see if the man can double down on that statement. Going back to the Shogun fight, and it's a bittersweet victory in some respects as Potieria handed Shogun a loss in his final UFC fight, and there was clearly a lot of respect towards the Hall of Famer. Potieria's work was pretty decent. He executed a good right hook, which spelt the end for Shogun, and it was a good sequence from the Ukrainian fighter to keep the pressure on and work from dominant positions for the finish. This earned him his first win and first finish in the UFC after earning his contract on Dana White's Contender Series, which was also a first round TKO. He is now 19 and three with nine knockouts, six submissions and 14 first round finishes. So you have to be ready for Bateria to come out fast from the bell. There was a little talk of determining whether a move to middleweight could be on the cards, but it does appear that the immediate future remains at 205. He has been getting ready at Tiger Muay Thai and that camp serves top level fighters very, very well. He has previously been over over to American top team and he has a solid amateur background as an international master of sport in combat sambo, pancrotion and halting. Fighting Carlos Ulberg is going to be a great measurement of where he stands in the division. The Kiwi is 7-1 professionally running a three fight win streak including a first round finish of Nikolai Negamarianu who beat Potieria in his debut. He is a member of the famed City Kickboxing in New Zealand and there is greatness in that training room. If Potieria gets it done on Saturday it'll be a huge feather in his cap and he'll trampoline his way up the shortlist of 205 pound prospects. What do you think? 
What gets it done and will it be a quick night? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for your company. Remember to fire up Fight Pass for the prelim portion of this weekend's card. Enjoy the fights and I'll see you soon.